my name is Faith Mulqueen and welcome to my first video blog of the 2016-17 school year. I am the director and lead teacher of Acorn Community School, which is located in Ojai, California. The topic for today's blog is exclusionary play. Oftentimes, children ages three to five developmentally are not able to work through issues around exclusionary play and what it means to be inclusive and why they are excluding other children. So it's up to us as teachers and adults and caretakers and parents to really be able to support children in working through issues of feeling left out or exclusionary play when they arise. So some of the reasons children ages three to five developmentally are not able to uh, process issues around exclusionary play are because they often are they have a single-minded focus, which means that they feel there's lots of different ways that that can manifest. One, the first way is that they feel that they can only play with one child at a time. And so if another child comes and tries to enter the play, they think, no, I only can have one friend at a time. And so they're not able to actually include another child because they don't think that they can. The second reason that's related to single-minded focusness is that children often associate one friend with one kind of play and another friend with another kind of play. So if Shelly is used to playing with Jen, they, they play house together all the time, and then Justin comes along, Shelly usually builds very tall towers and co does construction with Justin. And so she, when, an, when Justin comes along and she's engaged in play with her friend that she plays house with, she doesn't think she can be both people at the same time. She can't be a builder and also a mother. And so that's the second reason single, that's attributed to single-minded focus. Um, the third reason is that it's attributed to exclusionary play it has to do with the fact that children are developing categorical thinking during this age stage and they are on a daily basis looking at the world around them and the people around them and seeing how they fit into different categories. They're noticing similarities and differences. And so they might start to believe that they can only play with children who are like them. And this can manifest in a way of, or show up as, you know, one boy said to another at my school, you can't play with us because you don't have a red shirt on. And so that's one example of trying to, to fit children into different categories. And that's how exclusionary play can, can show up. Um, also, sometimes children exclude each other because they want to exert control or engage in power plays. And oftentimes one child is so instrumental in the play that they actually get left out. And they're so important that children will actually run after them and that child and say, you can't play with us just to make sure that they know. So as parents and teachers and caregivers, our job is to support children in working through these issues when they arise. And some of the strategies that I've come up with and that I've read about that I think are very helpful are the first one is when you walk over to children who are the excluders, you describe the kind of play that you see. You describe, oh, I see that you, you brought over these pillows and you have blankets and you set up this warm, cozy house. It looks really lovely, really special. It looks like you put a lot of effort into it. And so then those children who are the excluders, they start to feel confident and they start to feel excited about their play and that helps them open their hearts to hear how another child might feel when they're excluded. So that brings us to the second strategy. It's about reflecting what you're seeing and how it might make somebody feel. It's about cultivating emotional intelligence and awareness and cause and effect. So basically, I support the child who's feeling left out um, and using their words to let the children who are the excluders tell, say, hey, when you tell me I can't play, it makes me feel sad or it makes me feel mad. So that those children who are the excluders are, being, are getting their actions as well as how it makes another child feel mirrored back to them. And that helps to support children in understanding that what they're doing is creating a feeling in someone else that is not loving and is not kind. And the third strategy that I use is I remind the children, all, all of the children, that they have loving and kind hearts and that they're actually really good friends and they're a really good friend to play with and they help each other and they take care of each other. And this also helps to open their heart and to soften their heart when they're feeling like they only want to play with one friend or another friend can't play with them. Um, the third strategy, especially with categorical thinking to support when that kind of exclusion takes place is to try to understand what the categories are that are leading to the exclusionary play. 
So if it's about the color of a shirt or if it's about the color of hair or how fast you can run, well, it's about finding how the child who's being excluded might be able to fit into one of those categories. The fourth strategy is really just setting a very firm boundary when, especially when it comes to gender exclusion. So an example of that is when boys say to a girl, you can't play here because you're a girl or you can't play with us because you're a girl. And as a parent and a teacher and a caregiver, it's very important to be very firm when those kinds of boundaries arise and saying, you know, this is actually a place for everybody to play and girls can play here as well as boys. Hopefully that will, those strategies and those examples that I just gave will be really helpful for you and supporting your children and the children that you teach and becoming more aware, kind and loving children towards each other and towards the earth and their communities and everybody else that they develop relationships with in their lives. Thank you so much for tuning into this Acorn Community School blog and I hope that you have a great day.